Hey, hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Core Wellness TV. I'm Dr. Steve Hoffman, and today we're going to teach you how to make more space in your hips, how to keep your hips healthier, and how to activate hip mobility from the inside. Now I'm talking about the little bitty muscles that nobody knows how to access, right? And we're going to show you how to access them so you can keep healthy hips for the rest of your life, so you can keep moving and keep doing the things you love to do. And every episode of Core Wellness TV, I do them free. There's over 200 of them on YouTube, are sponsored by the Core Wellness Institute training course to reverse crossed posture syndrome, which is the unhealthy postural distortion we get into with stress and unhealthy aging. It's classic, it's predictable, but more importantly, it's reversible by reducing your mindset stress, by reducing your physical posture stress, and by reducing your nutritional stress as well. So these three pillars are always addressed, and we show you how you can reverse this unhealthy pattern of unhealthy aging, and you can get information on that at reverse, cpsnow.com. Com, and there is always a 30-day trial available for you there. If it resonates with you, great. If not, that's fine too. All right, on to today's episode. So we have uh, a pelvis here, okay? Now, very important to understand. I was This concept was, uh, was taught to me by Yerji Kompelik, okay? He's a prog physiotherapist, and he is one of these guys who really turned my whole life around when he talked about the act of pushing away from support points. And if you've been following me for any time now, you will have understood that, that good posture is simply about finding support points and pushing away from them. Now, what happens exactly when we push away? And I'm going to show you how these little muscles get activated in your hips and can actually make more space in your hips. Here's the deal. We have small muscles on the inside of our coccyx. So here's our, here's our, of course, our hip joint, and this is the ball, and this is the socket, right? So what happens is these muscles called um, the obturators and the gamelli, where these small little muscles, they all kind of uh, originate on the outside here in the greater trochanter, and they all kind of come down and connect to the sit bone or the uh, the 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 ischial tuberosity of the pelvis. And what you'll notice is these muscles, there's four of them in total, but you'll notice the orientation of all of them are in a downward spiral, or not a spiral, but a downward orientation, okay? So again, we have all these four muscles. Three of them are on the back, one of them is in the front, but the bottom line is all of them are in this downward orientation. And do you see how this kind of creates a, a hammock for the pelvis? Okay. Now, these muscles are also mainly external rotators, meaning they open your hips. And what happens with most of us is, and what happens with crossed posture, is our hips get internally rotated and it dumps our pelvis backwards and it, you know, kind of it cre it creates a lot of pain in our back. Okay, that's why we want to make sure we reverse this. I'm not talking about a strong tail tuck here. Okay, you always have a little bit of a wedge at your low back where your back is just always a little bit back, but it's never dumped. Okay, where your ribs fly out in the front and you overload your spine. So there's always that, that whenever you push away, from the three points on your feet, the three pillars, one, two, three, you find that connection. And when you have the intention of pushing away from them, it creates a spiraling effect. And these muscles are activated, these deep muscles. Okay. Now, if you, if you just sit there and squeeze your butt muscles, that's not going to do anything. That's actually going to jam your hip joint together more tightly. Okay, but whenever you activate these gentle, deep hip muscles, it actually creates. Now, what happens if I was to, if my feet are connected to the ground and I activate these deep muscles, what's going to happen? My pelvis is going to go up. You're going to make space in your hip joints, albeit it's not like you're going to put two inches in there. But hey, what about if just a little bit helps, right? Making some space in your hips, opening that up. Now, here's how you activate and find these, okay? So if you just, uh, if you just stand, okay? If you just stand and simply 
turn side to side without using your your glute muscles to turn. Okay, we don't want to we don't want to squeeze and fire our big butt muscles here. We're just nice and easy going to find your three pillars of your of your feet. Kind of make make those connections. If you got shoes on, take them off. Find those connections, and if you push away from your support points on your left, what's going to happen? You're going to spiral to the right. If you push away from your support points on your right foot, you're going to spiral to the left. Okay. Now, when you do this, when you're using it for, uh, you know, for turning, you're not necessarily getting a lot of lift. But what if both at the same time are activated? Now, instead of a rotational instead of that rotation going into movement, that rotation is going to come through your body. And that rotation is going to lift your pelvis up. And it's also going to bring your pelvis slightly under you, so your pubic bone is kind of like it was connected to something in front of you. If you haven't seen my video, The Pubic Bone Secret, make sure you watch that one. Just Google that on YouTube or um, on my site at gettoyourcore.com. pubic bone comes forward, spiraling up, and I want you to get that feeling of what that feels like. But if you find yourself butt gripping, then you're losing it. You're not, you're not, you're, and that's what most people do is they overuse the big, the big muscles. And that's also why my theory is, and that's why on the piriformis stretch for back pain and sciatica, my viral YouTube that I, video that I have out there, the, uh, the piriformis is here which is also an external rotator. Okay? And a lot of times we overuse our piriformis in external rotation because these guys, I believe, aren't working good enough or well enough. All right? So, when you activate this, then you have that nice, easy, open, floaty feeling in your hips. Okay? So that's how you do it. You know, and actually I use this every day in my office to check for for check for proper rotation, have people lay back on their, have people lay on their backs. Okay, imagine these are our, our hips. Okay, and so I'm laying up here. This is the hip joint, and these are the feet. I have people go out, turn out, and come back. And when they turn out, their leg should come back long. Why? Because if if I'm not against the ground, so instead of the pelvis going up. If your feet aren't on the ground, if your pelvis is, is if your if your pelvis is the base and you turn out, this leg is going to go longer, right? But if this is the base, then the energy is going to go up, right? So we turn out, and it's, so boom, we turn out should come back long. Good, okay, Mrs. Jones, that's great. Let's turn out over here. Up, oh, oop, and it comes back short. Uh oh, Mrs. Jones, your left hip is not externally rotating like it should. We need to fix that. And a lot of times, people in the opposite, and I learned this from Vladimir Yanda in person, the father of muscle imbalance, when he came to the United States to teach from Prague, he said that, that it's extremely common to always check, and this has rang true for me so many times, if the opposite sacroiliac joint is messed up, or it's having pain, or it's not moving, or whatnot, opposite SI joint is having trouble, look to the opposite hip. So usually when I do my SI joint tests, I'll look and say, ah, well, let's, let's fix that hip first. Let's get some rotation back into that hip. What do I do? So what happens is, is, I, is I'll, I'll have them, uh, they're, when they're laying on the table, I can't lay down here, but they're laying on the table with their feet up, and I'll have them push out into my hand and I will, I'll push back in while they're pushing out. I'm basically just reawakening those external rotators. Sometimes they've just gone to sleep. They've gone offline, right? So we reawaken them, switch them back on so the brain feels them going, working like they're supposed to. And then I recheck the SI joint and it's fine. So it wasn't an SI joint problem. It was a hip problem. Okay. So anyway, these are just some very important aspects of why you have to make sure that your deep hip rotators are working. Why else? Because whenever you take a step, every time you take a step 
forward like this, okay? I don't want to get too far out of the camera. You take a step forward. Whenever you push away from your support points, that is what gives you your forward propulsion. That that spiral that comes through your body. When you push away, you're you're sending a spiral through your body that gives you forward propulsion. Right? And most of us end up walking and we don't use our hip rotators because we're pulling ourselves along versus being upright and pushing ourselves along. Make sense? So that's the take home for today, guys. Find your support points and feel, just play around with that. Try to find that spiral. Find that deep inner spiral. And it's really deep. If, you, if you're working too hard, you're not going to find it. That was my problem. I didn't really get this. I took a whole 12 hours from, from Yerji. And I didn't get it until the way home in the car. Because I was just working too hard. I was squeezing my butt. And trying. He, said, he said, no, no, no. Your, your stability is not weak in the muscles. Your stability is weak in the mind. So it was all about the thought and intention of pushing away. And that... That creates the it brings on the deeper system. I call it the intentional system. The deep core stability system has these deep hip rotators as a crucial piece of the puzzle. So please try to find those and integrate those, and I think that you'll find them quite pleasing. If you start, if you feel like you're you're cranking too hard and your knees are hurting, you're trying too hard. Get your support points gently. Push straight away from those support points. And your internal spiral and these deep, deep hip muscles will come on. You'll make more space in your hips and everything will be happier. So that is it for the day, guys. If you are watching this on YouTube and you want to communicate with me or ask a question or make a comment, please do that at the blog at gettoyourcore.com from the description box down below. And that's where that is. And again, we hope to see you inside the Core Wellness Institute someday and we can go deeper and farther into your training. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.